Okay. You ready? Let's do this. You're listening to Explore Magazine's Live the Adventure podcast. This is the podcast that delves deep into the outdoors. We'll inspire, inform, and get you stoked to explore. And I'm your host, David Webb. When you have your health, you have everything. When you do not have your health, nothing else matters at all. Welcome to Episode 4 of Explore Magazine's Live the Adventure podcast. I'm David Webb. As outdoor enthusiasts, fitness equals fun. The fitter you are, the farther you can hike, the longer you can ski, the higher you can climb. But then there's the ever-present march of time. We all age, slow down, and eventually stop. Call it entropy. Today, though, I'm speaking with two fitness experts who look at age as a state of mind. Their names are Josie Boulding and Ryan Stewart. If you read Explore Magazine, you'll know Ryan's name. He's in every issue. Josie writes for us on occasion, and you may know her face. She's been a fitness model for us on a few times as well. They're married, and they've recently started a video project called Five for Five. Their goal is to delve into tips and topics relating to health and longevity, and the mind-body connection. Josie and Ryan joined me on a call today to discuss how we can all stay active and healthy as we age. We also chatted about dubious trends in fans, and how they hope to effectively dissect and examine the barrage of health and wellness info we're exposed to daily. It's all part of their video project and their mission. So without further delay, let's talk to Josie Boulding and Ryan Stewart. Ryan Stewart and Josie Boulding, aka Restless Josie. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself? Um, I'm Josie. Nice to meet you guys. And I'm Ryan. I'm a contributor with uh, with Explore there. I write lots of stuff for you guys. So, Yeah, any, uh, any readers of Explore will know Ryan's name, and you'll also probably know Josie's face. As a lot of times when we've had a fitness model, that's her. Josie, are you still restless, Josie? <laughs> I think I'm a little less restless than I used to be, um, but it's hard to change people's opinion once they're stuck on something. I mean, I still get people calling me that. So why don't you tell us what, what that was, uh, that where the, what I'm talking about? Basically, I'm, I'm nomadic, and it was just the way I was raised. And so I've always traveled a lot and been interested in different cultures and looking at how other people live so I can sort of piecemeal together what works for me. Uh, so I guess it's about my curiosity and my nomadic ways. So my friends started calling me restless because I was always going on a trip and it just stopped. And now you had a television show for a while that was called Restless Josie. And I know you've appeared in our magazine by that byline. So that's, that's how I, I kind of know you as well. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely um, a great memory for me having that TV show. I really met so many fantastic athletes, especially. Um, and I felt like that was such an honor to meet some of the world's best athletes and learn what makes them tick. And I feel like I've stolen a little bit of their lifestyle and incorporated it into my own life. Oh, that's great. You know, standing on the shoulders of giants, right? Isn't that what, what we all do? Yeah. Exactly. I learned that from Malcolm Gladwell. <laughs> so among the other things that you're, you're working on, Ryan, you're, you write for Explore and as a a multitude of other publications, and I know you all have a lot going on, but uh, recently you shared with me this this video project that's on YouTube called Five for Five, and I wonder if you could tell me what Five for Five means, and, and what what is this video project you're doing? So um, our, our idea was to kind of incorporate Josie's and my skills, so um, to do a video project, so Josie being the, the person on the camera, very comfortable in front of the camera, me with uh, kind of that writing background, the storytelling background, and um, it's, it's about how to age more gracefully, I guess, and stay active and vibrant for as long as we can. Um, and the five for five idea is that we will do videos that are five minutes or less that we hope give you five extra years of good living. And it, it comes from the fact that, you know, we're both, um, in our early forties and we're athletes and so we're athletes. we really care about our mobility. Mm -hmm probably um, chase that a little bit in the terms of uh, wanting to become better athletes instead of the inevitable, oh, you know, things are getting kind of sore. Maybe I won't do that anymore. We, we just, uh, we're a little bit greedy. We want to keep doing the things we love. We wanted to know how to do that. So we started doing research for ourselves. Um, and I came upon a talk, a TED talk actually. And I, remember hearing that they were trying to change aging 
and the way that we look at aging and start classifying it as a disease so that they could get funding um, to do the research because most of the terrible things that happen to us are because our cells are aging. Mm-hmm. Um, almost all the disease and including arthritis, which really affects athletes. So just the thought of aging being a disease, it just turned a switch on my brain. And I thought, why are we resigning to this? Is it because we've been like socially, historically conditioned to believe that we devalue as we get older and we kind of just have to suck it up? like be put out to pasture? I, I think mean, so. You know, I think you're, you're, you're hitting on it right, right there that especially like I'm also, I turned 40, I'm turning 41 later this year. And it, there is a lot of that idea. I think sometimes that is particularly probably, I know as you hit 40 is that, that mark that it's like young is younger than you and old is older than you. You're almost like, I wouldn't call ourselves middle age, but it is that almost like midpoint a little bit, you know, that you start thinking about that. You do. And I don't know if you've noticed this, but I noticed a lot of my friends having sort of ex- existential crises where they thought, oh gosh, like they're almost the, the way they were speaking was like they were losing their value. I think that a bit of that is because in a community that's aging, we've noticed that the elder community isn't really respected. Like we don't live multi-generationally anymore. Um, we tend to ship them off to a home where they live with other seniors and they grow old faster because they're around other seniors. I did notice that theme when I was going through your videos that a lot of it, that well, pretty much all of it has to do with, with um, long-term gain, you know, long-term uh, uh, health and, and, uh, and long-term um, mobility and, and athleticism. But you're looking at the idea that as you lose that, whether it's mentally, physically, or both, that you might be uh, feeling less of value as a person because you simply can't contribute the same way, you know, even, even if it's just in your, your recreation. I think that's a big part of it. And we also, I think Ryan and I have been very fortunate in our lives. And it's a funny thing that happens when you get to be 40, you start to think about how you can give back. And I thought about, well, what could I do? You know, what difference can I make to keep the oceans clean? And, Mm -hmm. you know, Um, and then I thought, well, maybe we could use our journalism just to get some of the information out there that has been fact checked, because I feel like there's a lot of false information on the internet, especially, you know, on numerous sources that I won't mention, and people buy into it. A lot of friends will end up on these crazy fad diets and things that'll promise them, you know, you'll lose five pounds, you'll add two minutes to what you used to be able to do in your wad workout of the day. Mm-hmm. And often they are short term gains. And so I just thought if people had someone who could check the facts for them being Ryan, and then maybe I could make it fun and deliver it to them in a package that was easy to digest. Because I know from my busy friends, they're like, we don't have time to spend 20 minutes watching something. So we thought, well, what if we did the work for them and just shared the information as our way of giving back? Yeah, so that's the path. I was wondering, Ryan, why we hadn't seen your smiling face on the videos yet. So I was, I, I figured you were the one offering the camera, but that's a neat, uh, a neat package that you're, you're, you're doing. You find a topic, and then Ryan can approach it from his journalist background, and then and Josie from your broadcasting background makes uh, makes a bit of a a nice little work together. Um, when you're looking at all these topics, all these things, you know, I it's quite varied from a diet to just general lifestyle, you know, for example, the, the one you did about um, alcohol and the benefits, pros, cons, and whether or not you should be drinking <laughs> that. I'm like, yeah. please, please let me drink it, please. Don't I know, that. I know, just for <laughs> one glass a day. Uh, so how, how are you going after these topics? Are they things that are important to you? Or are you, like you said, are you approaching things that perhaps there's a lot of uh, confused information I think I've got my, I mean, I'm a, I'm a woman. So obviously I talk a lot and my friends talk a lot. And so we're always discussing what the newest thing is. And I have a lot of friends who are doctors, so they're uh, very skeptical and debunking everything. (laughs) And so I feel like it's good because it causes um, us to really look at things in a scientific way rather than a fad. And so we just look at patterns that last more than 20 years. And, and we look at longevity as a, a long game. So if you look at like the blue zone diet, for example. Mm-hmm. They Which you talk expect, about a few times in the videos, I noticed. Yeah. It, you know, that's one thing that I think has been really well researched. Like National Geographic, you know, found these five zones where people live longer. And 
there's some of the things we can incorporate, but they do live in warmer climate. The diet is hard for us to replicate just being our growing season yep, and everything. Yep. I mean, that being said, there are a lot of things we can incorporate into our lifestyle that they're doing right. I thought the constant mobility was always a theme that came up. It's not necessarily oh, yeah. about, uh, you know, four days a week of intense gym sessions, but just sort of staying mo in motion all the time, which is something I tried to do. And I was, I was, uh, I'm happy that it's, it seems to be checking out. <laughs> yeah. Because I've yeah. never been a big gym guy. I've been more of a, you know, just kind of go out, do stuff, kind of stay moving, do, th you know, so. You yeah, and that, that seems to be, you know, that was a big thing, like you mentioned under the Blue Zones, was that idea that you, you build activity into your life. So you, you make your life purposefully a little harder, you know, instead of, instead of it being this, you know, I live right next to where I work sort of thing. You make it so you have to walk to work or, you you know, you have to walk to the post office or you just add those sort of active parts to your life instead of it all being about how can I get there the fastest and quickest with the least amount of time outdoors, you know. And that's really, I think, that the, the lesson that I took from that was just that idea of, of finding ways to to be active throughout the day, doing little things. That's really interesting, the idea of purposely making your life harder, because especially where we live in, in Canada, you can make it so easy. When you look at some of these blue zone diets, particularly I thought the, um, uh, remind me of the town in, in Costa Rica, do you remember? The, the Nicoya, Nicoya Peninsula. Yeah, called. that's right, that uh, a lot of that had to do with just, you know, daily motion to, uh, to, to farm and to move around and things. But yeah, if you, if you think about the way we can live in Canada, you could get up, get into your car, drive to work, get in an elevator, sit down, get back in your elevator. You know what I mean? And you'd live a perfectly happy life. But, but, uh, but by adding those things like walk to work or take the stairs or just like add in purposeful difficulty, that's, that's a good way of looking at it. And you have to retrain your brain because your brain wants to do what's easy and what's familiar. And as you know, we have neuroplasticity, but um, we are hardwired to repeat the same thing over and over and again so it's also about changing what you do you have to mix it up think of like a farmer he's gonna have like season so he's naturally gonna change up what he's doing so that way you're using different muscle groups and maybe sometimes it's cardio maybe sometimes it's anaerobic it, it's the variety that that keeps our muscles and our brains growing we need that variety yeah I had a great uh, sort of aha moment last night that um I was sitting in the living room with my wife and my dog and I was looking at my dog, and I'm like, man, look how like ripped he is. He's so muscular. Like, like I'm like, <laughs> basically get the same amount of exercise. Like I, I go and uh, and and my wife looks at me. He's like, yeah, but when you're at the park, he's running. What are you doing? I'm like, oh my god, I'm just standing there. You're right. I should be chasing him around the whole time. I would probably be as good shape as my dog. But just that that idea of, of keeping things um, a variety and and uh, staying in motion was it was neat. I could just follow my dog everywhere, and I'd probably be in amazing shape. You would be, yeah, <laughs> with downward dog incorporated. You yes. Get Exactly. No in there. Yeah. <laughs> the interesting thing, you know, I was, I was talking to somebody about um, transportation, the future of transportation in cities and things like that the other day. And he was talking about how the biggest trend they're seeing and realtors, you know, back this up is that people want walkability. It, it's, it's an issue because that's exactly that idea, right, of, of building mobility into your life. It's, if you live in a walkable community, it means you're walking two blocks to go to the supermarket and you're grabbing your bags of groceries and you're walking home with them. And, you know, it's, it's like working out by accident. And so it's in some ways, it's so easy for us to not do it. But in, on the other hand, it's, it's almost like uh, we're at this point in society where we want it without even knowing why, you know. Yeah, it's a funny thing. I remember my dad, who's in his mid 70s, and he's very active. He was saying, he told me a while ago, he's like, when he was growing up, he said, all the fit people were out in the country and all the unhealthy people were in the city. And he said, at some point in time, that started to switch because cities started to be more walkable. And whereas living in the country, you could literally, like, if you weren't thinking about it, you could just get in your car and drive and, and, and not do a lot. I mean, it depends on the person. There's obviously a lot of like, you two live in a, um, a more rural area than I do and are extremely active. Like if you're in a city, it's almost sometimes more convenient to walk. You know, I mean, you get in your car, you're grinding through traffic. You can just you can just go for like a, a 10 block walk to the groceries and like, forget it. I don't even want to drive where as in rural areas, it, it's uh, the exact opposite. So maybe it, it it's just funny to look at these these little uh, aspects to your lifestyle and start dissecting them. And it is about tweaking your lifestyle. I think almost everything we've learned is about that. But I think that the missing element that I've discovered is the mind-body connection. Because there's only so much you can do physically if you're not on your game mentally. So 
what I mean by that is incorporating like meditation or yoga or some kind of guided meditation into your daily life. I think that is an aspect that is sorely like lacking these days because we, we aren't spiritual the way we used to be. We don't go to church. We don't have like community things we do, but I think it's slowly being replaced by people going yoga together or like maybe doing um, CrossFit together, like different community things are cropping up. Like mm-hmm. what are we going to replace that with and, and how can we make it benefit us? Because I mean, whether you are a spiritual person or not, I think meditation is more about just focus concentration, you know, just really learning to achieve your goals faster because you're focused on them. And so when you talk about the mind-body connection for yourself, what, what does that look like beyond the meditation? What do you focus on as, in terms of goals? I do a three-year plan in the morning. Mm-hmm. So in my meditation, I started doing this Mind Valley app that Vision it's like a guided app and you take through different stages of meditation. And, and a lot of it is what I learned actually doing the restless Josie show about visualization. All the athletes that I talked to would talk about imagining themselves doing the ski run before they did it and picturing hitting each bump perfectly and turning their body when they had to turn it. So they've rehearsed it all in their brain so when it, when it goes to happen, it almost just unfolds perfectly because their brain has already memorized how to do it. And, and that was the one thing I would say they all had in common, the podium people, is that they've all sort of learned that mind-body connection to pre-visualize what their goal is. And I think with aging, it's the same. Like if we're telling ourselves, if we're looking in the mirror and we're telling ourselves we're aging, we're going to age. Mm-hmm. But if we're looking in the mirror and telling ourselves we're enough, and that we deserve to to keep moving, we we deserve to you know hold on to this vitality. Then I think we we can as. Mm-hmm. Yeah, visualization is so important. I know I've seen that before at uh, um, Olympic athletes, for example. I, I see it sometimes yeah. if you watch around the ski racing, you'll see yeah. them like with their eyes closed, like almost yeah. like swerving uh, and stuff. Yeah, it's so cool because I, I think it's so important to visualize the process rather yeah. than the outcome. I sometimes get caught visualizing the outcome, like, oh, I'm going to mm-hmm. achieve this. But yeah. with visualizing the process, I feel like it, it's kind of fooling yourself. You don't have any method of getting there. Exactly. Yeah, you need, yeah I think you need to do both. You got to have that, like, okay, hey, here, here, here's how I'm going to get from one place to the other. But you also have to have that. You know, I think a lot of times when you think about things like that, you start visualizing, it often ends in, you know, we have those fears that creep in. And go back to that ski run. You're visualizing your ski run, everything's going well. And then there's that one corner you're worried about. And, it, and then all of a sudden, if you're not focused, you know, oh, you crash in your visualization. You're like, no. Yeah, that, that, that sucks. Eh? Crashing in your visualization. That's you got to start that over again. Yeah, you don't want to uh, do that. <laughs> um, the other thing I was going to mention, though, too, is, is an interesting study we heard about early on where they uh, took some people that were in an old folks home. I think they're all over 70. And they recreated their life, put them back in a world that seemed like it was you know, if it was today, it would have been like the 1990s, you know, and, and put them back there and played the music and everything that was going on in that time. And those people like literally got younger. So they basically make their surroundings like they used to be for them to like almost trick the brain to thinking that they were younger. Absolutely. Into their heyday years. Mm. Right? So instead of feeling like, hey, here I am in an old folks home with all these old and I'm old and I've been, you know, as Josie mentioned earlier, I put out to pasture almost, you know, it was like, oh yeah, this is uh, 30 years ago. This is what I was like 30 years ago. And it's like, boom, just like that. Do you try to incorporate something like that in, in your life? Thinking about, I mean, again, at, at 40 ish, you know, you're not out of your heyday, yeah, yeah. but I mean, certainly there are um, some physical things that you have to maybe address more than you did when you were 25. So do you ever um, try to uh, introduce uh, some hey- heyday visualization? <laughs> I, I use music because mm. I think music can be a very good um, vehicle for that. So I'll listen to music from my youth. So, so what's that? Like a lot of uh, Nirvana and Pearl Jam, Smashing absolutely, Pumpkins? Or- <laughs> absolutely. Lauren Hill. Lauren Hill is big for me. <laughs> Miseducation of Lauren Hill and like the Fugees. Yeah, like, okay. You know, sometimes I'll listen to some dirty rap and it, all of a sudden I'm like, oh yeah, I used to be kind of feisty and I'll remember, you know, like, it's good to sort of trick yourself into thinking like you did when you were 20, because there are some things about it that are amazing. If we could have that vitality and that positive outlook, mm. I mean, I, I think that that's something to hold on to. Obviously, 
you don't want the short term sort of goals that you had at 20. You know, I just want to make enough money to buy that concert ticket. But if you could take that excitement and um, just being optimistic for the future that you had when you were 20 and bottle it, like that would sell like hotcakes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to try that with the music, uh, looking, listening to some stuff that I used to listen to in the 90s while I'm, while I'm working out or, or just going after some task. That, that's a neat idea. It'll be fierce. Uh, I guarantee it'll make you fierce. You won't even realize you're doing it. And all of a sudden you're like, because you're, you're, you still have that capability, but it's all those aches and pains have sort of like pushed you down. And if you want to like get past it, 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 it's that mind body connection. Again, you almost have to trick yourself. I'd say the other thing too, maybe for me, it's not so much thinking back to, to my youth, but just not thinking I'm old, you know, like I think that's also part of it. You know, you hear lots of people talking about, Oh, you know, I'm, I'm too old to do that. Or that's, I don't do that sort of stuff anymore and things like, and I, and I, and I really work really hard not to have those sorts of thoughts. It's, you know, whatever in most of the things I'm doing, I'm just as happy doing what I've, you know, improving in a lot of ways. And a lot mm. of, there are definitely certain risks I'm not willing to take anymore. You know, like there's things where I'm like, yeah, when I fall doing that, it's going to really hurt and it takes me longer to get better and it's just not worth it anymore. But the but fear I, makes us old. I mean, I, I, I would say I don't paddle into the waves I used to paddle into because I have, I have the knowledge of what it feels like to get held down for a while. You know, I was thinking about Jamie O'Brien and interviewing him and him saying like, if you want to catch that wave, when you're on the wave, you have to think that's my wave. That's, he actually talks to himself in the third person. He'll be like, that's Jamie's wave. Jamie's going to get that wave. That's his wave. And I remember thinking, wow, that sounds crazy. But then I tried it. And I, it was like the fear I didn't have time for it because I was focused on this weird third party speech that I was giving myself. That's good. Block it out with some sort of silly, you know, mantra in your head. Then you're, yeah, that, that and distracts then I yourself. to be afraid, you know, because a lot of fear is perception. But of course, there's some reality to it, too. I remember, um, uh, Ryan, it was an article you wrote a few years ago. Um, I can't even remember what it was about, but it, but it was, it was, um, we we're talking, it was talking about the, the mountaineer that you profiled. Do you remember his name? It was. Oh, the, the one that climbed all the 14th, or all the. 8, yeah. 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 Um, um, but anyway, it was a thought about uh, how mountaineers often high altitude mountaineers hit their stride around 50 because yeah. they're, 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 um, they're mature enough to understand these risks a little bit better. And also they haven't, you know, nothing bad has happened to them up till then, but because of skill and, and, and uh, risk assessment. But at the same time, you think like, wow, like 50, like you're still going up above 8,000 meters. So it's this idea that like they've rightfully convinced themselves they're still youthful and young. But at the same time, there is that tempered mindset that these risks that they're looking at are real. They're not imagined risks, you know, no. um, and, and, uh, and you, can, you can better assess um, with that maturity. So I guess there's like a maturity that you can utilize, but it doesn't mean getting old you know yeah. maturity and, and wise. age being wise absolutely well the mountaineering saying is there's old climbers and there are bold climbers but there are no old, old climbers so yeah. <laughs> there you go yes exactly yeah another thing i noticed with the videos for five for five um particularly there was the the fasting intermittent fasting or fasting in general you talked about and also the, the ketogenic uh one that i thought was interesting that you were looking at these um it's not always about this is what I'm doing, this is what works for me, you're actually examining some different, uh, whether there are trends, fads, or lifestyles, and, and looking at both sides, because really at the end of, I believe both of those are definitely the fasting. Josie, you, you, your conclusion was, you know, it's not really something I'm, I'm super interested no, in, but these are some pros me. and cons. Yeah. So is that gonna be something you continue to do, is look at um, not just necessarily successful fads and trends and, and, and ideas, but just things that are out there and, and, and uh, examining how they're working. Absolutely, because I owe it to my friends to do the research. Be, I mean, that's kind of the way I see it. My, my, my close community, I would say, they would love it if I could tell them, this is a quick fix, you should do it. But I'm not selling anything and I have nothing to gain by lying to them. So I'm trying to give them the impartial view, like, I'm going to look at this, you know, in a scientific way where I'm going to weigh the good and the bad. And uh, I'll, I'll give you a takeaway. And often uh, we will try it ourselves rather than just, you know, do the research, because I think that's often a missing element is if you haven't ever gone without a meal, how would you even know what that felt like? Mm -hmm. Or if you haven't ever made a keto 
meal and you're like, wow, there's a lot of butter and cheese in this, you know, it, it, you've got to make it physical so that you can relate to the people who are doing that because then you can see it from their point of view. Yeah. Particularly with the intermittent fasting, I thought it was oh, yeah. good towards the end when you're talking about it, you're like, it seems so simple. Yes. Like it is, it is, you know, it's just like, seems so simple. It's like, stop eating at this point in time and then eat yeah. again at this point in time. Yeah. But there are, uh, my wife tried it for a little while and honestly, um, it was a lifestyle interference that she didn't oh, like yeah. towards the end, you know, like yeah. this idea that like trying to rush home from work to get dinner in before the certain time and like yeah. making a bad choice because of that sometimes, because exactly. it's like, I literally can't even get a healthy dinner in this time or, or things, you know, so yeah. there are, these are the things that only come up once you start doing it or how it feels to go. 12 hours during the day without only water. <laughs> exactly, exactly. We just, yeah. um, one of my friends in Ontario just sent me a study actually because she was on the keto diet. And it was about if you're on the keto and you're replacing your carbohydrates with a meat source, so an animal product, you're actually not helping your longevity. Mm. So this is what I instinctively felt when we were actually on holiday together and, and all she was eating was like meat and cheese and butter. And I was thinking you're missing your micronutrients from the garden, your, your fruit and your veggies, you're missing the fiber and the prebiotic fiber. Like it can't be healthy long-term. Mm -hmm. And really the studies are showing it isn't healthy long-term because you can't live on steak alone. You can, but you'll live to be, you know, not as long and you probably you'll end up with belly fat and a heart attack. So it's really a good option, like a variety, putting a little bit of steak in your stir fry, that's the way to go. Like moderate, basically. I, I think a <laughs> big thing that we've we've learned from looking at a lot of this stuff is is that almost every, you know, diet trend or exercise idea, you know, that they they, they all have something worth borrowing. You know what I mean? Like, I think we the learn. more we look into it, the more we're like, oh, well, you know what? I think that fits with my lifestyle. That works with the way I like to eat or our diet. Or maybe we should try and work a little of that in because, you know, whatever they're talking about there makes a little sense. And and I think slowly we add little bits and pieces into our into our life. And, and that's kind of a big part of it, too. It's just, you know, figuring out what works for you and how it, you can make it work in a sustainable way. Because I think a lot of times we've talked about this, you know, if you fast, you know, maybe you can do that for a few months. But, you know, eventually you're like, you know what, I don't feel like rushing home every night and making dinner as quick as I can. And I don't like how it makes it so I can't go out with my friends. Or I don't like keto because I love salads and I want to eat giant salads full of fruit and my fruit, you know, and these things that you can't do otherwise. And it's, it, so it's about finding those things that you can sustain those healthy lifestyle choices that you can sustain over time. And so I think a lot of times rather than being very strict and regimented and finding those things that are very um, niche that are hard to follow, it's more about finding, okay, well, you know, maybe, maybe I could just stop eating at seven o'clock at night and then try not to eat until seven o'clock the next morning. And that could be my fast. Something more achievable, a little bit easier to, to pull off that's easier to work into your day and not be so strict about it, but just try. And so true. Yeah. So true. And I think like you don't want to get yourself convinced that you know everything because knowing is the opposite of learning. That's an important thing too, is being flexible. And, you know, because like I said earlier in the show routine is so comfortable for us, but that flexibility allows us to take in new information and incorporate it. And, I follow a lot of um, biohackers and I feel like they're doing experiments on themselves that benefit me because I don't have to do them. <laughs> no kidding. I, but I mean, you've got to look at it with an open mind because a lot of my friends, when I tell them that they're like, Oh, well that seems unnatural. They shouldn't, you know? And I'm like, well, what do you think that is that because you were told you're supposed to, you know, kind of give up or like, why, why can't they fight it? I mean, I think it's also just, um, we've been conditioned to believe that, you know, you're going to, you're gonna, your hair's going to go gray. You're going to get a pot belly and you won't be able to run up the hill anymore. And I think that's bold. Mm -hmm. Well, the hair might go gray, but the other stuff doesn't have to be true, right? <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, of the of the videos you've done so far or maybe that are, are are you're planning or have worked around what are have you discovered some new things that you hadn't thought about and what what are what are those uh elements that you've now been incorporating or really been impressed by 
I have a really good tip for um, skin and skin cancer because I myself have had a couple basal cell carcinomas uh-huh. removed um, from years of surfing. <laughs> um, B3 is uh, one of the newest things that they're talking about. It was discovered in Australia because they have a lot of skin cancer in Australia. Mm-hmm. And that's a dietary thing you can just add. Hmm. And it's most people don't have any reaction to it. Um, and it's been shown to dramatically reduce getting a second, a third, or, you know, like getting them. Yeah, it, it helps you on a cellular level because everything you're fighting during aging is basically, you know, you're getting little mistakes in your DNA. Those little mistakes lead to like, you know, your gray hair, your wrinkles, your mm-hmm. your arthritis in your knee or whatever. Like if you can kind of trick your body into thinking that it's younger than it is, then it will react that way. Mm. So I'd say B3 would be my number one thing lately that I'm like, well, it doesn't hurt you and it can only help you. And most of us who are outdoors people are going to end up having to deal with some kind of skin change. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's an issue. And I think um, particularly people maybe around our age too, um, maybe in our younger days, weren't careful with the sunscreen like we should have been. We thought we were, you know, the, the, the studies were, they were, they were there. We were ignoring them, but they're really yeah, here they now. You yes, know what I mean? Were. But now you can't <laughs> ignore them. Um, and so I, I, I feel the same way. And so I, I'm particularly interested in that one as well. Yeah. It's a good little tip for outdoors people because um, we're not going to stop going outside. Like for one, I'm not going to stop surfing. So I'm like, I, I said to my doctor, like, you just tell me what I have to do because I'm going to give up the outside. <laughs> um, I'd say the one for me that I've really kind of adopted full heartedly is, is one of the first ones we did was about how to stay mobile. And it's one that I really, um, because I love being outdoors and doing outdoor sports so much, it's one I pay a lot of attention to. I just, when I see, you know, someone walking around, an older person walking around, they're all stooped over and looking really uncomfortable. It just, that's, that's one of my worst nightmares, you know, about getting old is, is not being mobile, is getting kind of sore and stiff and, and not being able to do the things I love to do. And so it's, it's, it was that episode that really kind of enforced for me the need to do a little bit of maintenance all the time. And, and not, um, I think at my age, you know, up till now that's always been about getting stronger, fitter, faster, you know, better endurance. And, and now I'm taking a little bit more of the, okay, I need to do more stretching and more mobility stuff. And so that's, you know, a little bit of stretching, um, and different types of stretching and, and foam, using foam rollers to massage out muscles and fascia and, and, um, and those sorts of things. So a, a daily routine of, of that that I've built into my, into my day is, is, uh, is the one that I've kind of grabbed onto the most. Yeah, foam roller. If anyone out there isn't using a foam roller, it's been uh, important for me in the past few years too. It's sort of life-changing, actually. It is. It is. Yeah. I torture myself, but yeah, I like yeah. it. <laughs> the first few times you get on one too, you're like, oh my God, but yeah. you have to stick with it a little bit and it gets easier every time, I promise. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it hurts for sure. And then I would say also yoga, because I was always the person who would skip yoga to go outside, always. Um, but so That surprises me about you. I would have thought you'd be right into the yoga scene for a long now, time. Now I am, but um, it's because I have more patience. I just didn't have the patience when I was younger gotcha. to honestly sit still and meditate and do yoga. Um, but that's made a huge difference and it's actually improved me athletically, um, which I think if you told 20 year olds, they'd be more likely to incorporate it in terms of like working on being more flexible, but strong at the same time. It's really hard to develop that because like if you're in the gym and doing weights, you're going to get stronger. Um, but if, can you be strong in that position? Um, when you're lengthening out your muscles, do you have strength, which would affect like, rock climbing, surfing, like hiking, all the things we like to do. And injury prevention as well. That would be a big one for that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Resilience to, to the stress that's being put on your, your body just by doing those activities too. You're building like a good, you know, I, I think of it like I, I'm building a good um, foundation to build 
to build my body on. Yeah, I think too, um, again, something that comes with age, and it would be great to be able to pass this on to younger people or, you know, if you, is the, that long-term vision? Because like you said, Ryan, just a few minutes ago about getting like fitter, faster, stronger, you know, that idea that if, if so you're running a 10K in, in 50 minutes and you want to get it down to 40, you know what I mean? Without Rather than thinking about, or how can I stay at 50 for 20 years to come kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, like that, yeah. And that's something that I'm, uh, I'm, I'm thinking about more too, um, uh, that this idea of uh, maintaining Gaining, um, getting better, but uh, but also uh, not necessarily just uh, looking for short term gains or just trying to, to break records or something and looking at it from a long term. I mean, it's one of those things that I think only comes with age. Absolutely, absolutely. Because if you think about the way sports are being pushed and how quickly they're improving, they almost need that innocence about them, or they wouldn't do those mm-hmm. things. But they have that that youthful enthusiasm it's necessary. Mm-hmm. And that, uh, you know, remembering what that pain felt like when you broke your leg. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, you can't forget yeah. that really very easily. No, no, not at all. <laughs> and sometimes it's, it's uh, what you're risking too. I think sometimes at, at 22 years old, you're like, ah, oh, whatever. And at 42 years old, you're like, whatever. no, no, I got stuff I'll I'm trying to protect now, yeah. you know? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Your yeah. dog would be really upset if you. Could he would it, definitely. Right? You know, I think I think about stuff like that. I do. So, in terms yeah. of some of the things that you've discovered that um that you you uh, are uh, have been impressed with, you know, the B three and things like that. What about as uh, is, is there anything um maybe intermittent fasting is one of those things, but you you've gone into that you're kind of like you know I, I don't think I'm going to incorporate this. This was interesting to delve into, but has 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 there been a, a particular fads or trends or or uh, themes that you you're not that not that sold on lately? Um, I'm pretty open-minded and I, I usually feel like I get, there's something I can take away from it, but there are certain things that are sort of non-negotiable for me, I think. Like um, with keto, giving up vegetables, mm. I was just like, intuitively, I knew that was weird. But yeah, yeah. You usually know instinctively, but um Recently, we have been like doing some research into different things you can take for aging. So one of the top trends for this year, um, like Wired Magazine came out with all these trends in Citibank. And one of them is is what they would call anti-aging medicines. Mm. Um, And some of them obviously aren't going to be available in Canada. And I'm not saying Ryan and I are going to try them all or anything. (laughs) There has been a few red flags for me where I was like, yeah, I wouldn't do that. Um, But... I also feel that there's always a place for learning there. So, you know, maybe I wouldn't do that, but I would definitely take this if I knew there was no risk Mm -hmm. to it. So, you know, people are taking things like um, there's a new diabetes drug, metformin, that people are taking as an anti-aging med because it lowers your risk of cardiovascular disease, cancer, like a lot of the things that kill us, basically. And that it does that by controlling your insulin. So you can do it with diet and exercise. So I would say that's another thing too, is like, do I need the medication or is this something I can do by tweaking my lifestyle and, and sort of figuring that out and learning to sort of take what's best and take what you like and incorporate. That's, that's interesting. That kind of relates back to what we were saying before a, a little bit and, uh, about making your life uh, purposely more difficult. If you're looking at something like, okay, here's something that I can take as a pill, but that's just avoiding the idea that maybe walking 20 more minutes a day might also do this for me as well. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Maybe skip the sugar in your coffee. You know, like things like there's those little things that you do every day that you don't think about and they add up over the so years. So what about your, your personal opinion? Pinch points. Are there, what, what are you working on right now? I know you've said a couple things uh, about what you're you're looking forward to, but uh, but uh, from learning. But w- what do you think? Uh, what are Ryan's and Josie's uh, hurdles that you're trying to get over as as we as we age? How I, do I narrow it down? To- <laughs> I know it's like just one. I can only choose one. I would say when I was like in my um, first season of Restless Josie, we got picked up by a men's network in the U.S. And one of the guys who was doing my video editing um, was this really kind man who lived in LA for me. And so I got to know him a little bit. And I remember saying to him, oh, you know, I I can see that 40 year mark in my near future. And I'm worried that my -hmm. career is finite because Mm -hmm. of my age. And, And that really, for me, kind of stuck with me. And then I remember talking to him about it and him being like, well, the only thing that you're gonna have to really give up is no more bikinis on camera after 40. And I was like, why is that? 
And I realized it was one of those rules. Where you can't be sexy after 40. You have to, you have to then. Now you're matronly. You're officially like before under 40, or, you know, it's exactly. like, no, no, switch. I'm now like, you're, now so you're the. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So I would say that's something that I struggle with because I want to wear a bikini. Like I, I feel like I work really hard for my body and why should I cover up because I'm 40? Like, I don't know. I so mental that blocks that's, for you. It is. Yeah. I think I, I need to work on that and just, you know, how can you maintain your, I guess, sexuality as you age as a woman? Uh, I think that's big for me too. Um, and just something that I hear quite often, even in the yoga community, you know, like, how do you not become matronly? How do you keep your sexuality and your vitality? You know, just that like spirit of, of uh, mm -hmm. enthusiasm. I think for me, I still struggle with that, that idea, you know, that, that I still want to be, I still want to spend my time doing and, and playing, playing and pushing and, and working hard. And, uh, and, but more and more, I know that the that the maintenance, the stretching, the the strengthening is more important than ever if I want to stay injury free. If I want to still be able to do the sports I love to do at a at a you know at, at a level that I enjoy, you know, I I need to do those things more and more and more, not less. And so mm. it's finding that balance where, um, or maybe just slowing myself down enough to to be like, okay, no. It's okay if I just do some stretching today. I yeah. don't have to work out every single day and go out and do a run or a mountain bike or something every day. It's I, it's okay to just have yeah. days where I you can count yeah. yoga. We have this conversation. <laughs> As a workout, yeah, on your you workout know, like, board for the week. Yeah, yeah we used to not count yoga. Yeah, no, that's that's really good. I I struggle with that sometimes. Almost a, a sense of guilt. You know, if, if I if I uh, yeah, if I'm looking exactly. out at the North Shore and being like, well, why aren't I? Why, I should be out there trail running today. And all I did was walk my dog to the dog park. And then and I'm like, well, you know, that's okay, right? Like I don't have to, you know, be be charging it all the time. But I do. I struggle with that for sure all, all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Positive self talk. It matters how you talk to yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. I think um, Ryan especially is always like. What do you mean you want to work out inside? And his voice kind of goes. Yes, the, the drive to get outside sometimes too. You feel like, well, I've wasted the day if I don't if I don't you know get a you know. Yeah. That's what he would say. Yeah, yeah. he'd be like, oh, well, it's a beautiful day. Why wouldn't we go outside? Are you crazy? Yeah. Giving yourself permission to uh, to be variable in what you're doing and how you're living. Yeah, so much of it is mental, isn't it? So your body is doing what it's doing, and as long as you're fueling it and and. Um, keeping mobile and stuff a lot of this uh, i think what we're, we're talking about is, is in your in your mind um and and your mindset mm -hmm. right it's the only thing you get to take with you is is your state of mind so that's really what we mm -hmm. shall all be working on like all the rest of it is is like the icing but the cake is like your state of mind back to your your five for five project uh can you sneak peek some of the things you want to talk about uh you're going to be talking about coming up <laughs> <laughs> We secrets. both look at each other like, oh. It's not a secret so much, but, you know, kind of as Josie alluded to earlier, you know, a lot of times the ideas are, are more like, well, what, what are we thinking about? What are we talking about this this week? What should we be doing our episode on this week? And it's a little bit more spur of the moment of, of we, kind of we what's grabbing us. And so we have to know, like, what's trending right now. And often our immediate reaction is, oh, my God, that's total bull. We, we need on that or and then we start reading into it and we're like oh maybe there's something in here you know maybe there's a reason it's popular and so I guess what Ryan and I are trying to say is we we really fly a bit by the seat of our pants on that. Ryan when you first emailed me about it you you mentioned that it's a, it's a bit of a passion project right now but we, do you have plans on, on where you where you want to see it or are you just kind of uh, flying by the seat of your pants in that too? Um, no I mean I think you know long-term plans we'd love to see this be a, a business we'd love to see something come out of this um, maybe a book um, you know, we, we have lots of ideas of what it could become and down the road and, and, and for it to be something that we can do and as, as, uh, as a partnership, but how will we get there and what that exactly looks like? I think we're still, we're struggling with monetizing because right now it's really a heart based business and, um, we wanted that to be the focus for at least the first year, but within three years, I'd like to see us have a website where 
people could get the audio version, the written version, and the video, and also like a forum, like a safe forum to ask questions where you don't feel embarrassed. So maybe things that you would normally um, ask your mother or a doctor or a teacher, you could, there's a forum to ask your health and wellness questions. And also just like a place where you know that the information hasn't um, been diluted by the advertising needs. So, so we're trying to balance that. That that actually is one of our biggest struggles because the second you take a sponsor, you know this, you kind of have to tow, tow the party line. Well, I mean, it's interesting today in digital production of, of any kind, it's never been easier to do and it's never been harder to monetize. Mm-hmm. You know, it used to be if you had a show that was, exactly. that, was, that was already done for you almost. But now, I mean, you can professional quality video and, and audio and all these things are, is, is great and YouTube and Vimeo and all these things you can do, but uh, but turning into a business is um, is challenging. So I wish you the best of luck because I enjoyed your videos so far. Thank you, Thanks. thank you. Yeah, we we do have the enthusiasm, and I think that 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 mm-hmm. helps. A so lot. if someone's listening, they want to check out Five for Five on YouTube. Should they just search Five for Five, or or how are we finding you? I think the best place is actually Facebook. We only put on YouTube for the few people, what is it, the one in five who aren't on Facebook to give them an option. But on our five for five page, we try and have most of the episodes available there as well as um, sometimes there'll be health tips and wellness tips. So just search five for five on Facebook and, and track you down. Yeah. Five, number five, F-O-R, number five. Is there anything you'd like to leave us with before we end? Drink water. I'm thirsty right now. <laughs> There you go. There you go. The best thing you can do. Plump up your cells awesome. today. Thanks so much. Thank you, Dave. Bye. Thanks again. The march of time is something that's on all of our minds. It's inspiring to me to know that as I age, I might actually get better, not slower and worse. But we got to put in the work. It's not easy. In fact, like Ryan and Josie say, we have to purposefully make it difficult. But don't forget to have fun while you're doing it. Otherwise, what's the point? Thanks for joining me today. I'm David Webb. And hey, stay healthy.